I guess we can get into the, the talk. Um, I'll start with the disclaimer. The following talk is simply an, in my interpretation of Humble. There's no like scientific facts or credible sources that, that backs it up. Um, and if you leave here with anything today, I hope it's at least a little bit of inspiration. So that said, we'll get going. When I was 17, had all the time in the world and very little responsibility, I did this. Um, I also took part in a whole lot of extracurricular activities, which made drawing for hours a breeze. Shortly after, I was accepted into a fine art program at the local college where the extracurricular activities only increased and my, and my status of self immensely decreased. The reason being is that I entered into the program with an entirely inappropriate attitude. Um, the kind of attitude only an asshole would have. Uh, it's that arrogant, self-entitled, know-it-all kid who was ridiculously unqualified. And I'd like to ch chalk these poor attributes up to just being young and inexperienced, but deep down, I feel like there was probably more to it than that. When it was time for my first year review, I went in to present to a panel of professors. Um, and it kind of went like this. Um, they, they were all super smart and highly respected, and I completely dropped the ball. It wasn't with the presentation necessarily, but more with the quality of work, because I went in thinking that it was great, um, and I presented it as such. From that, I vividly remember a comment one of the professors made, or actually they asked me, uh, you were a superstar in high school, weren't you? And then this is, this is me on the right. Because that, like, yeah, no. All right, so, but, but, so I asked my, I was, I was like, I'm, I'm not really sure. I, I guess so, maybe regarding art. And so the professor replied, well, let me be, be very clear. You are far from being a star here, let alone anywhere else. There are other artists, professional artists, who can do this with their hands tied behind their backs. And you, Mr. Brennan, may want to reconsider your career path. Well, fuck me, right? <laughs> like, I've had my fair share of constructive criticism, but, like, that was a real soul stomper. Um, I never finished the program, not because of that specific moment, but because I hadn't realized my full potential yet, and I still haven't. However, in retrospect, I think it played a really big role in my formative years and how I approach my work today. And I tell you this not as a simple anecdote, but in the hopes to illustrate that this was the first of many times in which I was force fed a piece of that humble pie. Um, and it's also important to mention that, that it didn't only happen to me, it's happened to all of us, right? We've all experienced some sort of pitfall in our past, something that has made us doubt our capabilities, something that has made us question our worth, and quite possibly something that has even motivated us to do better. It's kind of the personification of any instance in which we've been humbled. Like that one time you asked the girl out on a date and she said no, right? We all know that. Or that one time you asked the girl out on a date and she said yes, but then proceeded to tell you you have something in your teeth. Or that one time you were shut down by a colleague, shunned by a teacher, or just completely failed in front of your peers. The result is the same, pure and utter humiliation. These experiences are humiliating because they acknowledge that, um, actually, no, they remind us that we're only human and nowhere near perfect. Humility comes into play when we accept the fact that we will never be perfect. And for us in our respective fields, there's not really any such thing as perfect. We will never create the perfect illustration. We will never create the perfect composition. We will never create the perfect picture, or take the perfect picture, and, or even conceptualize the perfect campaign because it's also subjective, right? You got it, right? Art, design, all that stuff. Um, which makes us even more susceptible to those humiliating experiences. But there is a bright side. We can choose our own outcome. We can either let other people get the best of us or take it in stride, be humble, and move on. 
Now I'm going to borrow a little bit from that Phoenix Design Week talk because um, there's still some rel yeah, still relevant, I guess you could say, um, where one of the salient points that I made was that no one is really smarter than you or better than you. I'd like to retract that statement because I was wrong. Like, um, <laughs> like, like a hundred percent wrong. Um, the sentiment was really, really nice, but in actuality, it was pretty fucking far-fetched. Because after recently being laid off um, and a shit ton of soul searching, I keep coming back to the conclusion that there still is indeed a shit ton of talented people that are both smarter and better than me. And these are the very same people who have a bajillion more dribble, behance, Twitter, whatever. Um, and they will continue to achieve amazing things, receive more likes, win more awards, and gain more recognition. It's a simple fact. I also said that comparing yourself to these people was a bad idea, but maybe it isn't so bad. Maybe, just maybe, it's a great idea. Stay with me here. We're looking for that little Easter egg of opportunity when comparing ourselves to others. And I really see it as an invitation of sorts, not to prove how creative or skilled we are compared to them, but to instead be grateful for what we already have, search for what others can teach us, and acknowledge that we are all part of a much bigger thing. Because the sooner we realize that there are larger things at work than, <laughs> than just us and our insignificant little lives, then the better off we will be in focusing on things that really matter. Right? Mind blown. <laughs> and with intent, passion, and sincerity, we can pursue these interests with unabashed enthusiasm and have a wonderful time doing them. This will then give us a sense of pride for what we create, and with pride comes confidence, and from confidence comes the ability to appreciate our place in this inordinately complicated mass of humanity. Because after all, we are not the center of the universe, and the universe could have very little fucks to give about us. It really is up to us to validate ourselves and give credit where credit is due. And the important thing to remember is that we're all doing the best we can with what we've been given. It doesn't matter in what capacity we work, each and every one of us are successful in our own right. The only difference is our definition of success and self-worth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought being humble meant, well, according to Webster's Dictionary, having a low estimate of one's own importance. That kind of sounds like having low self-esteem is a good thing, right? Well, not really. In short, characteristics can be, these characteristics can be very unattractive. That's Chuck Testa. So you guys, in, okay, no, never mind. Tax Dermy? No, okay. Um, so um, in short, these characteristics can be very unattractive and problematic as we seek success. Being humble does not mean we should be meek or less worthy of others. Instead, we can really be confident and self-assured without being a prick. And part of being self-assured is understanding our value to others. Having the ability to discover what other people have to offer is invaluable in so many levels. And having a genuine interest in their knowledge and their opinions will only open us up to being filled with everything that is awesome. And that is worth its weight in meal tickets. Because if we continue to stay hungry with an appetite for a more abundance in life and from these other people, then we will simply grow a greater appreciation for the world around us. The intrinsic value of this is that we will continue to learn even more, which makes us better prepared to acknowledge our individual self-worth. The incidental value of knowing your self-worth is no longer needing to seek praise from others. Having the ability to do your part without looking for accolades is a strong indication that self-assurance and worth are both hard at work. And when we no longer need the proverbial, proverbial pat on the back, we can do our jobs with purpose 
and with being mindful that it will be done well and in accordance to our best expectations. I also think it's important to mention that being humble is much more than the aforementioned or Webster's definition combined. It is also entails being able to understand that we're all at different points in life, that we didn't start out with the same advantages or disadvantages, that we haven't had the same opportunities as everyone else, and we certainly can't even pretend to comprehend what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes. Humility is knowing that there are bigger things at work than us. It's being grateful of what we have and compassionate for what other peoples may be going through. It's the culmination of authenticity and appreciation. It's really an act of courtesy towards others. It's sincerity in its purest form. It's never being satisfied. It's always looking for more. It's striving to be better. It makes us relatable to each other. It makes us likable and it makes us real. And it's everything the devil despises. He would probably prefer the self-deprecating shares or the humble brags that we are all guilty of. Similar to the super fit CrossFit girl who posts pictures of herself working out, but then hashtags muffin top. Or, <laughs> or that one guy who posts, oh shucks, look at me, I'm working on the most ridiculously awesome project the world has ever known, but I can't tell you about it because it's that awesome. Yeah, have at it. And I, side note, um, maybe like pet peeves just grow stronger with age. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> I definitely have to say like things like that bother me more at 33 than they did at 23. But I digress, back to the thing. So what I, what I want to leave you here today with is that this is really less of a lesson for you than it is a reminder for me and my obsessive nature. We are champions at making life unnecessarily complicated. It doesn't mean that we're doing anything wrong. We simply don't keep it simple. After all, we ought to be happy with ourselves and having the time of our lives. And it's detrimental to that happiness to discount that in any way. People will always be better than you, but that doesn't mean you suck. What does suck <laughs> is when we let it get the best of us. Instead, be willing to accept failure, make adjustments, and move on. Look for opportunities to learn from others, acknowledge your self-worth, and be proud of your work. Allow for that sense of accomplishment, but don't be a dick about it. And always be considerate of others, because without them, we would be nowhere. And then we'll get to the end of it, having had an awesome time. And there you go. Um, thank you. So also, I felt like it was really weird to talk about humility. Like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> like, right that, like, do I bow? Like, do I, I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, totally kidding. So, yeah, does anyone have questions or did it make sense? It made sense to me, but it could have been all over the place. I don't know. What's up? How did you curate all those awesome gifts? A shit ton of gift searching. On, <laughs> it was actually like that was probably the least productive I was in, in creating this speech because. Yeah, like I would look for like angry teacher gif and then I would end up like finding like like classrooms in in fucking other parts of the world where teachers are like karate chopping students in the face. <laughs> and then that like snowballed into like, like just so much random shit and then at one yeah, anyway. I'm just, Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. And it's really entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, so, yes? That was awesome, and I loved it. And I just have an extra comment that's kind of relevant. Uh, I read a Buzzfeed article, I think, of uh, elderly people looking back on the five things they regretted. One of them was they wish they let themselves be happier. Ah, so, all right. That's a good tie-in, see? Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah? So how 
would you personally define humility with one word or a finger? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one word would be, especially after this talk, is considerate. I think it's, yeah, it's being considerate to others and un understanding that you're not the center of it all, you know? Um, as far as a picture for that, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I'll think on that. I don't know, it'll, it'll come to me, yeah. Yes? Oh, good point. Yeah, what were the, Mike, what was, what was yours? Quiet. Quiet? I had sloth. Sloth, okay. That's good. Tansley? Listen. Listen, okay. Cool. I, yeah, okay. I don't, I, the quiet one doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Oh, got it. Okay, I still saw him as moose antlers, but. I, <laughs> and to, no, no, but it totally makes sense now. I love it. <laughs> um, any, anyone else? Any other questions? Well, yes. As one of those elderly, I would like to say. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That, that, that's the best one to have. Yeah. It's just hard, it's hard though. Like, a lot of... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love my life. <laughs> but it's, it's so true because we get, we often get caught up with so much of the, just the day-to-day -day and all the shit that we deal with and like it's super easy to lose sight of like dude, like I woke up with like breathing today that's a great step you know like that's huge um, yeah be, thank you for letting me breathe that's amazing um, yeah um, yes so the root of the word humility come from the word humus which is earth and so humiliation or the act of humility is returning to that ground yes that's a, yeah I didn't it makes sense. I didn't research that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that, yeah, yeah. So it says often we think about humiliation as being like pounded down, and it's really just about returning to that, that base sensation. Right, yeah. right, and being grounded back, yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, yes? Is someone that has been an example of Um. I gotta say, um, my old creative director, Bob Case, he, he's kind of the, he's an exemplar, exemplary um, embodiment of that. Um, he, he was just, he's one of those guys that is very talented, very good at what he does, not only in advertising, but also in illustration. Um, and, you know, it never, Whatever the work that he did, it never became about him. It was about the work. And he was very good at positioning it that way and letting the work talk for, for itself and not him having to talk about the work. Um, so that's definitely something that I, I appreciate from that. And hopefully I'm learning as, as I go, go along. So, yeah. All right. Anyone else? Okay, let's wrap this up. Thank you.